All righty, welcome everybody to another ASEA Global Expansion Team Zoom. We are incredibly fortunate to have Scott Alder, the Chief Operating Officer at ASEA, as our special guest tonight. So for the next half an hour, we're going to learn about what he's been learning about because he's got all kinds of insight into the world of redox signaling and he's got a perspective that most people don't have because he lives in that production center with the molecules. So Scott, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. Sorry, I had a technical difficulty. I sat on my Zoom light and it wasn't working. So you, you give me uh, unfiltered, I guess, tonight. That's perfect. We like you unfiltered, you know? We just want to hear it straight from the horse's mouth, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm happy to be here. It looks like we've got, uh, looks like Stevie. I haven't seen him in a long time. So land down under, that's awesome. Yeah, we got people from all over the world on this uh, Zoom, Scott. So um, I know that that uh, everybody is dying to hear what you have to say. I know that and you were excited to share about some insights that you've gotten into the world of redox signaling. So tell us a little bit more of about what you're talking about when you say that. Yeah, so this has been an interesting year, right? We've uh, had our challenges with COVID. And so what that's allowed us to do is actually do a lot more research and development on, on the product. Um, part of my role is running the operations for C is of course, having an oversight over the Redox Center or the production facility. And um, in our efforts to keep up with demand, we've actually discovered um, a lot more about the product than we ever knew. And so I'll, I'll go through and maybe give you a few updates and give you a little bit of behind the scenes, what we've been working on. But one of the things a couple of years ago is we started to expand. Um, we needed to make sure that we could keep up with demand. And so we looked at some ways to uh, be able to produce more product quicker. Um, also, we looked at some stability on the product so we could increase the shelf life. Um, and just to give you a little bit of backstory, one of the reasons we expanded into Asia and into some of these other markets was in order for, for ASEA to reach our full potential, we need to have enough profit each year that we can reinvest in the company. And because we were growing at such a slow rate, we were profitable. Um, but there wasn't a lot of extra money for research and development or expansion. And so those, those last two years before last year, uh, 2018, 2019, we opened some countries, probably, probably not the best idea. It was a lot of work, but what that allowed us to do was have more profits to reinvest in the company. And one of those big things we did this last year was we invested in the Virtus Norton uh, Redox Lab. And if you've ever been to the production facility, what we did is we moved all of our testing facility to a new lab that we built out in the corporate office. And so that allows us to test to a different level that we've never been able to test before. We invested in some additional equipment. Um, and previously we had tested uh, molecules in parts per million. So everybody knows what a million is, but in the last year we've been able to test down to the level of parts per billion. Um, to give you an example of what one billion is, is the average heart beats one billion times in the first 30 years of life. So what we're looking for is we're looking for molecules, uh, like looking for one heartbeat in 30 years. And so that's the level of testing that we're able to do now. So it's a, a really advanced level. Um, when you test to that level, you actually have to know exactly what you're looking for too. And so that's been one of the things that we've improved with the talent on our team. Uh, two and a half years ago, we brought on a full-time geneticist to run our lab services. Um, a little over two years ago now, we brought on Dr. Uh, Kurt Stickley, who has a PhD in organic chemistry. And then we were able to hire a full-time chemical engineer. So by getting people a lot smarter than myself and people that are very specialized in their field, um, not only were we able to scale the output of the ASEA, um, but we're also able to um, look for different molecules and different molecule sets. So I just saw a question, uh, 
said that we thought the product was tested. Well, of course the product's tested. What we're doing now is we're looking, we're doing on the research side so that we can um, get to a different level. So it's one of those um, discoveries where you find out um, that the product was actually a lot better than we thought, meaning that there's um, there's more activity than we thought at the at the different levels of the of the product. Um, but it also allowed us to improve the process. So I don't know if many of you've noticed, but the last year we about a year ago, it'll be a year ago in March, we were able to increase the expiration date on the SIA Redox from 15 months to 18 months. And a lot of that comes with the processing and the ability to test the product on site. So we, what we're trying to do is make sure you have 80% of the molecules at 18 months. And so that was the goal there. Um, so a lot of behind the scenes testing. The other thing that we're able to do is we're able to make the product in larger quantities faster. And you might ask, well, why is that important? What that allows us to do is use our capacity that we were using for to keep up with the production. Um, now we're able to use that in development of new products. And I will give you a little hint, we've had a breakthrough. And so that all of you know that Redox is a lot wider and a lot broader than what we've talked about in the past. Everybody thinks that the only place Redox is, is inside that blue bottle. But that's not true. Redox is all around us. Um, and what we're able to do now is the, since we've been able to expand our testing, we're able to look for other products that are based on the same principle of redox chemistry. And so we, we've had some really exciting breakthroughs. Um, I can't tell you more than that, but there are new products in the pipeline that are all redox based that will be, ba that will be produced at our redox center. So there's a lot of activity with new equipment um, on the testing side and also on the processing side that will lead to no equipment on the packaging side. So um, it's gonna get top secret here pretty quickly and we won't be able to do many tours, um, but it's been, really been exciting to see the breakthroughs we're going through. I, I did a call on Saturday and we've had more technology breakthroughs in the last two years than we had in the previous 10 years combined. And so it, it, I guess what I wanna tell you is that there's a lot going on behind the scenes and it's been nice for me to be at home and, and to actually go into work every day and, and to spend a lot of time there. We know that's not gonna last. This is a very unique opportunity for us to push the technology forward and uh, really expand our definition of what redox is. If I was to tell you, if somebody was to ask me, what is redox? I'll give you a really um, technical definition that's actually pretty easy to remember. Redox is the transfer of electrons. We know that when we make the product, but we also know that that's what it does inside your body. Um, if you can figure out how to message that some way and, and to come up with a really catch, good catchphrase, that would be your best uh, short definition when somebody asks you what redox is. The other thing to remember is that we test for potential because when we produce a product, we're actually producing energy so there's energy in the product. So I want you to remember that inside the bottle is redox potential. That means the potential of the transfer of electrons to activate uh, pathways inside your body. And that's what the product does. It's, it's taken us a long time to really figure that out simply. We knew for a long time what was happening, um, but now we actually test to the level where we can see what's happening. And it's, it's very, very exciting. A lot's changed. The technology that we started with, that Virtus started with uh, 12 years ago has evolved. And I don't think we talk about that a lot, but it's, it's something that you should all remember is we're not standing still. We've just got a head start on the competition, that's all. And so we're probably about 12 years in front of everybody, but we're continuing to develop our own level of technology. That technology is classified as intellectual property. We no longer file patents because when you file a patent, it has to be peer reviewed or it should be peer reviewed. And right now we're far enough in front, we don't really want anybody to know. And so we're not even gonna bother uh, filing new patents. We're classifying these new discoveries as intellectual property. Um, 
and rest assured, we're going to come out with some new products for you. And they're, they're going to really expand what we can offer people. Um, not only with the, the ASEA Redox story, but we'll be able to broaden that story and show people really what the true meaning of Redox is. So that's, that's your 10 minute sneak peek of what's going on. Wow, it's so exciting. I mean, I've always said that, you know, when you think of tissue, you don't say tissue, you call it Kleenex, right? And when you think of soda, you don't really call it a soda, you call it a Coke, right? When you think of Redox, you're not going to call it Redox, you're going to call it a SIA. So as a global brand, I mean, we are it. So I just, I love being in the position that we're in. And I love the fact that we are 12 years ahead of anybody else going into this and understanding this and developing this. So the average Joe on the street can find out about it instead of just the good old boy network, you know, it's really uh, wonderful to be able to offer this incredible discovery. Sometimes it's kind of taken for granted or misunderstood to average to offer it to anybody who's open-minded enough to learn about it. Right. Yeah, that's right. And I, I think it's, we probably made it too complicated in the early years. Cindy, you know, you've been here almost since uh, the founding of the company. Um, and, and we had theory, but we didn't have true science. We had some studies. Um, right now, we've divided research and development into two departments. So research is being handled now by Dr. Nico, who's he's in our office in Germany, and he soon will be moving over to the U.S. Um, and he'll be handling university level research, which we are teaming with other universities throughout the world um, that are interested in, in redox reactions. So he's gonna handle all the, the research on that side. Um, and then my team will continue to do development and that development is with the technology. And then the two teams combined will handle new product development. So we'll be looking at it from a technology side, um, looking at it from a research side. And then of course, marketing comes in and tells us, hey, these are the, the best combinations and these are the things we can say. And then we have regulatory that will make sure these products will be able to get into all of our markets. And so it's, it's quite a big deal, but with the breakthroughs we, that we've been having, um, we're gonna be able to expand our product line. And that, that to me is really exciting after, uh, you know, this is my ninth year with the company. So I'm, I'm glad to be doing something a little bit different. Well, it's so exciting. We often talk about it, um, you know, that Virtus has handed us his baby saying, take good care of my baby, you know, take good care of my baby. And we're learning more and more about this baby and um, bringing this precious discovery, you know, to people all over the world. And, you know, I just so appreciate what you guys do because what you do, there's a lot of moving parts on your end. I mean, we're the marketing team. We make sure that anybody that wants to learn about it can learn about it. And anybody who wants to help us share it will help us pioneer this onto the planet. Um, but you guys, man, you're handling so much on that end as far as research and development, the legal, the regulatory, the, you know, the production, the payroll, the, I mean, just there's so much that happens at the corporate side. We feel so blessed to be able to pay $40 and invest in our own health and tap into the infrastructure that you guys have set up. It's just, it's an opportunity you know, just the perfect storm. It's, I mean, it's, it's just, I've never, and I know Bo has never been in a position to partner with a company like ASEA. It's just a phenomenal opportunity. It is great because I think this, this past year has been so difficult. We haven't been able to gather. We haven't been able to have events and, and feel that synergy that we get from one another. Um, but rest assured, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, I, I have probably put in more hours at this point in my career than I ever have. And, and 12 and 15 hour days are because we want to do it, not because we're compelled or there's a requirement. And the days start early and they, they last a long time, but uh, I, I think it's going to be worth it. And we, one of the things is we want to make sure we can uh, keep up with the demand and we're, doing everything we can. Uh, this last year, we expanded the Redox Center to now it's a full 66,000 square feet of manufacturing space. Um, but remember, we can also build up. So we, we have plans to section off the building. So there'll be a, sec a, 
second floor where we can increase capacity. Um, but adding the last section of the building allows us um, to have a lot of space to go in and out. And so it's really exciting. We're in a, a good area. Um, we've also looked at contingency planning by having the technical um, expertise to expand and create other uh, manufacturing facilities as needed. Um, so that was one thing we did this last year too. We actually sat down, made the plan, um, decided how much it was gonna cost, cost out all the equipment that we'd need to duplicate the facility um, in, in another location to be determined. Right now, we don't know for sure where that would be. It would have to be run by our own people uh, because we're working with such a high level of intellectual property right now, we wouldn't wanna ever hand that off to anyone. And uh, it is exciting. So yeah, we're working behind the scenes and we're, we'll have some good things to talk about when we finally all get together. And uh, I guess it'll be next April will be convention um, where we'll be in Las Vegas together. And so we, we expect some, a lot of exciting things. I, I think we're still hoping for maybe a sneak peek by the end of this year with some things, but uh, we'll see how that goes. There's still a lot of hurdles to uh, get over before we can say that, but we're well on our way and that's exciting. Well, I know that one of the core values at ASEA is sustainability. And I know that ASEA is also very strategic in the way you protect the intellectual property as well as production, you know, protect the production side of it so that, you know, that we're the only ones in the world that actually produce it and that we produce all of our own redox product so that um, it is, you know, protected in those patents and those that intellectual property is protected. Talk about, you know that, I mean, backorder situations, there's so many companies that get in backorder situations. And I know that you have a long history in operations with, you know, a variety of companies. Talk about the sustainability factor and the fact that we own the real estate one block down from the international headquarters where we produce all of our product and that we could double our production in 90 days, right? Because of the way the production facility is put together. Yeah, we could we could actually double our production overnight. So the, the way we've set things up now is that um, we're only operating about 20% of capacity. And that's even with the increased growth. So if someone told me tomorrow we need to gear towards doubling the output, we could probably have that in about a week to 10 days. Uh, the difficult thing is not the machinery or the operation. It's actually having enough people to do that where we have a labor shortage uh, where we live here in Utah. Um, the economy is very, very strong. We've probably weathered COVID more than most. Um, we haven't had any really shutdowns. Uh, it's probably why we have more cases than everyone else too. But um, the, the good news is that the, at the Redox Center in the corporate office, we've had no transmission of, corporate or, um, of COVID from our work staff. People have always gotten the virus outside of work. And so that's why we're, we're doing that. But we could, we could really kick out the, the production as that's needed. The difficulty has been this past year has been that the supply chain, the, the movement of products, there's just so much moving right now. And so we've had delays in ports as the ports have been closed. We've had uh, delays in product shipping um, from Salt Lake where the, the railhead is. So our product will go on a truck and then it would go on a train and go to the ports in California. All the ports in California are jammed. We go up the coast of Oregon and Washington, they're jammed. And so we've actually been porting a lot of product out of Houston, Texas, and going down through the Panama Canal to get to Australia and Asia. Um, and then we've, we're switching back and forth between Florida and Virginia to get things going uh, to Europe. So it, it's been very creative. As we do this, if you're in the U.S., you've probably seen a lot of weird delays um, just to your to your deliveries. Some of those have happened. We've had some pretty good delays in Australia as well. Surprisingly, we haven't had a lot in Europe, um, but they probably have a little bit better infrastructure. But yeah, there's, there's been a lot of challenges, but we're ready, obviously, to, to take it to the next level and continue that. It does make a big difference that we produce our own products. So we're not relying on somebody else. We've actually geared all of our materials so they're produced um, in the United States so we don't have to import those. That's, that's been a big advantage this last year. 
Yeah, well, it seems strategic to go through Houston until Houston gets yeah. snow, right? Well, that was that was a little different. And remember, we have a warehouse in Dallas, and they were they're not used to snow, so they were shut down for two weeks. But also having a distribution point at our production facility, we were able to shift orders that were normally fulfilled in Dallas, um, and we fulfilled them ourselves. It's just that once they got to Texas, those trucks were all stuck in the snow. They're they're not from Colorado, Cindy. So they don't, they don't know how to drive in the snow. They just don't do it. Man, send, send us your snow. We need snow. I know Utah loves snow. You guys ski as much as we do in Colorado. And man, the, we could use all the snow we can yeah, get. We're, right? we're dry here too this year. Absolutely. I hope the rivers do okay this summer. Hey, listen, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this, you know, the, we're so on the cutting edge. There's universities all over the United States, all over the world that are opening redox centers you know, University of South Carolina, University of Nebraska at Lincoln, you know, Cornell, Harvard. I mean, I could just go on and on and on and on and on. You can Google universities that are getting grants from the National Institutes of Health to study redox biology. And um, I know that when Virtus, you know, and the team first stabilized these molecules and put both sets of molecules in the same bottle and in the same tube, people were slapping the table saying it can't be done. And Virtus is like, well, we've done it, you know, and so, you know, you say that it's a, it's a transfer of redox molecules or a transfer of electrons. I call it a spark of the divine huh. <laughs> because it's like quantum physics. You know, it's just amazing what's been done. I remember Tyler Norton started, you know, used to say it's on in the bottle. It's ready to go. It's just not activated until it hits organic matter. So, I mean, what we've got in that, you know, pretty blue bottle in that elegant white tube might not look like much, but man, when you start to experience what it does in the body and you start to hear the stories about how it's changed people's lives, you know, it's, it's, it's co cool quantum physics. Yeah, no, I actually had a, a meeting with the, the brand team from the marketing um, side of the business today. And I said, you have to remember that this product or this company was built on product experience. Um, we, our messaging isn't great. Uh, the product's a little bit different and it's hard to explain, but people have experiences on the products and that's what makes the difference. Yeah. And once people experience the product, you know, sometimes we feel like we have to explain why that happened. Well, at the end of the day, it's very hard to explain why that happened. You know what I mean? It, it happened because your body's working better at the cellular level, period, you know? And when your body's working better at the cellular level and those cells are talking and your body's getting information that it wasn't getting before or, it, or the information that it used to get when we were younger and we were producing a lot more of these molecules, man, things just work better. And when things work better, people have stories. So, you know, most people, they really don't care why you know these cells are working better or those cells are working better they're just really happy that they're feeling better or they're performing better at an athletic level or um you know and, the, and it's great to know that a private ski instructor and a rugby player can introduce this to you know a baby or an old person someone's on medication somebody that's healthy somebody that's an in athlete uh, an olympic athlete and we're not going to hurt anybody and we're not going to get anybody in trouble so it's just wonderful to work with such a benign technology that's also so profound. Yeah, and I, I think as, as we think about that, the, we we're only at the beginning. I, I think everybody's been waiting for something else to happen. Uh, we finally have the funding because of our expansion to do that. There's, there's a percentage of the business of the profits that we invest back into the business every year. And it's finally starting to make a difference. Um, we are on the cutting edge. It's probably been a while since we've come out with something meaningful, um, but we, we need to make sure. And I think early on we worked by theory and we hoped, and now we know we can test to absolutes. And that, that's what's exciting to me is we, we don't have to guess anymore. We know exactly what's happening. Um, we have, we control every input and those inputs are everything from the way we filter the water to the type of salt we use, to the amount, to the amperage, to the voltage, to the time, to the temperature. All those things are things that we control 100%. And we're actually learning by pulling each lever what they actually do. 
And that's what's been exciting to actually realize that uh, we can manipulate and to create new products on the base technology, but we can also create different technology um, that we, we're just really to the point. I don't, I don't think Virtus ever imagined this. Um, he, he's, he's not, he doesn't get around that great anymore. And so he, I haven't seen him in a little bit, but uh, I don't think he actually imagined. I'm just glad he took a chance. And he said, I, I think this is something interesting. And I know when I looked at the technology uh, nine years ago, honestly, I didn't believe it. I said, no, that, that doesn't happen. Um, you know, based on my background of uh, the production of dietary supplements. And, you know, now we can actually do all the testing and that goes, goes right along with the stories that everybody tells those product experiences that, yes, this is actually working at the cellular level inside your body. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it, Bo and I, you look out in the world and you think, oh man, sometimes this gets, is, this seems so hard. I mean, we could go, you know, promote juice or, you know, lotions or potions or something that everybody else is doing. And, uh, you know, because you think, geez, people just don't get this. People don't get this. But I, but the, the, what attracted us was that this has never been done before. We're, we're making history here. And I know that you had opportunities coming out the yin yang for you and you've chose, no, 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 no. I like figuring out this is a puzzle, right? Why are you sticking with a C after all this time? Well, that's actually interesting. I, I considered myself a, a professional <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I'd never worked for a network marketing company, but I decided if I ever was going to do that, then we were going to create our own products. And so for me, that's the exciting part of it. Uh, we, we get to hear the stories, both compliant and non-compliant. So I think we know that we're doing good, but now we're really to the point that we understand how. And, you know, it's been worth it. I, I think I can look back and say, hey, there, were, there were some dark days that uh, we were having a hard time getting this thing up off the ground, but it's due to the efforts and the belief of those like yourself and those on this call to go out and share the product. I mean, you're taking a chance. You're going to your friends, your family, sometimes people you don't even know. And you're, and you're saying, here's something that works for me. I want you to try it. And that's, that's what makes this whole thing works. It work is that we're able to share those, share those experiences. Um, I can't do what you can do, but you probably can't do what I do either. So together we make a good team. That's right. That's right. Well, we know that this product would die on the shelves at Costco. It's not likely that somebody would pick up a blue bottle for 40 bucks. It says redox signaling, even if it did say buy it, you know, redox certified on the back, you know, they would say, okay, well, I have no idea what this is about. And they put it back on the shelf. And if they did buy it and they tasted it and it tastes like swimming pool water and they think, well, oh, my goodness, I'm going to return this. Right. So it, you just, you go through the scenario in your head and you're thinking, there's no way that this could be marketed any other way than word of mouth. It needs a human interface and so that's why they chose the distribution method of network marketing. So it's not like they were sitting in a room going, hey, let's start a network marketing company. What do you want to sell? They're saying, you know what? How can we get this incredible molecular discovery in the hands of the most amount of people globally? It's got to be done through word of mouth. And the internet makes the world flat so that whether you're in Taiwan or Hong Kong or California or Texas or you know Mexico, it doesn't matter. You can have access to this technology, as long as you know somebody that knows about this thing and that you're open-minded enough to learn about it, right? So when that perfect storm happens, the network grows, the word of mouth travels, and the world you know, of work redox expands, right? Yeah, I think that's right. And if you're a little tired, if you're a little weary and a little worn out, um, just hang in there. Good things are coming. Um, we're, we're one of the few companies that can say we had a growth year during COVID. And that, that's due to the strength of the company, the strength of their products. Um, but I guess my encouragement would be the best is yet to come. If you're, if you're wondering if, you're, um, if this is a good decision for you, believe me, I've asked myself the same thing. But I haven't asked myself that question in several years because I know where we're going. Um, I see it from the inside. And I'm very enthused and uh, probably as, as passionate as ever that uh, we're really going to make a name for ourselves and we're really going to impact a ton of people on the way. 
Absolutely. Well, Scott, we're wrapping it up. We're at the bottom of the hour. I know it's dinner time for you. You want to get home to your beautiful family, unless you happen to be in your bedroom in the yeah, back I'm, of the house. I'm in my, my bedroom reading room here. That's the only place okay. I can get peace and quiet. <laughs> All right. Well, just one last question. And that is talk about legacy. I mean, we're not here to make a small mark in the world. We're here to make a big mark in the world and that this company will be around not only for our lifetime, but for our kids' lifetimes and our grandkids' lifetime. So talk just a little bit about that. You know, that doesn't happen unless you have some incredible people with amazing principles that are captaining the ship. And I know that you've worked very closely with the people that um, are ushering this baby into the world. And, you know, we've worked very closely, not only with the field people, but also with the corporate people in ushering this baby into the world. So just talk a little bit about legacy and, and the people that ASEA attracts. Yeah, I think that's a good and a, a fair question, Cindy, that the people that I interact with every day are some of the best individuals that I've ever met in my life. And I'm not just saying that, I mean, I really believe it. And a lot of times in a corporate, uh, um, the culture of a corporate um, entity, there's a little bit of infighting or backbiting. And that, that's all of us that have worked in jobs before, they know you know that, but I can I can say that I've never been part of a more unified team. Um, we there's a high level of respect. Everybody is pulling their their weight. Everybody's working really hard. We're we're taking a hard look right now at any inefficiencies in the business to make sure that we can um, have the right people. Um, there's not a day that goes by that um, I don't have some type of conversation with with uh, Chuck Funky, the CEO, or, or Tyler, or Jerem, um, we interact very easily, almost on a daily basis. And we're all very busy. Um, so we might only have five minute conversations that we need to have, um, but we work together very, very well. And I, I think we've made some structural changes on the corporate side. Um, we've added uh, Jörg from our German office to be our chief revenue officer extremely passionate and extremely motivated. He's very experienced. I love working with him. Um, we've, we've had Gina Anson to our marketing team. So the, the talent level is increasing, but the level of commitment has never been higher. Um, we spend a lot of time with each other. So I'm, I'm hoping that number one, we like each other and number two, that uh, we get along, but it, it has something to do with the output. So Great team, never worked uh, around people of this caliber for this long and uh, it attracts good people when you, when you uh, work with a company like that. Absolutely. Well, we can feel the synergy and we sure appreciate having you as a part of the team. And, you know, you got big shoulders, you know, physically, but you got a lot of a lot of weight to pull. So we really appreciate you spending, you know, 15 hour days trying to figure out this and figure out that and make all the pieces of the puzzle work. So we sure appreciate you, Scott. It's great to be in partnership with you. And thanks so much for taking some time to give us some insight into the whole Redox world tonight. Yeah. And the next, next time you see my wife, thank her because <laughs> she's the one that allows me to, to work at this level um, and to put forth that time. Um, she's really patient with that and, and knows that this is, this is both of us. This is what we're trying to achieve. And uh, so she, she allows me to do it. She might even push me out the door once in a while to get busy. Well, we know Gloria, she's a tiny little lady, but she packs a heck of a punch. So <laughs> thank Gloria for us. And we'll give her a call as well. Awesome. Thanks Thank everyone. Tonight. Absolutely. Good night, Scott. All right. Take care. <laughs>